Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing air passenger protection regulations and how these work. Now, in the last segment, John, we were discussing how if you have experienced, you know, a, a long flight delay, you're supposed to get a, a text message from the airline telling you why the delay has happened and that you may be entitled to compensation. Look, I have taken a lot of flights. I've had a lot of flight delays. Sometimes I've received compensation but I don't think I've ever received one of these messages telling me to apply. Is, is this, am I an anomaly or, or what's happening here? It's probably a more, a more recent change to the processes of what the CTA, the Canadian Transportation Agency, is asking carriers to do. There's been some clarification of the APPRs, as we call them, since they were impl implemented in 2019. And I think that, you know, the, the process for advising passengers of a delay it's really incumbent on the airline to get hold of you through whatever channel you made the reservation uh, and for, you to, for them to advise you of the delay uh, and the fact that you may be, um, you know, compensated. And so it is up to you as a passenger when you arrive at destination. The rules are that you get compensated if you have uh, a delay that's three hours beyond what you were ticketed, six hours or nine hours as a compensation level for each one of those types of delays. So once the flight is over, you can make a claim to the airline. The airline has 30 days to respond to your claim. Uh, and that's, and the, and the clock starts when you make that claim. And then the airline has to, in fact, make a decision. They support your claim and give you compensation or they refuse your compensation. If they refuse your compensation, you have a number of alternatives. The one that was designed in the APPRs was a claim to the CTA, the Canadian Transportation Agency, to in fact look at the agency providing that service of, uh, of mediation, literally, between you and the airline to get that claim resolved. Um, and that's the official process and how it works. So Gabor, we were talking in the last segment about what types of delays you may be entitled to claim compensation for, and then some exceptions to that. So. Uh, I know weather, uh, perhaps wild storms, sure, that is not within airline control. But I, I know people have had experiences where airlines deny compensation, claiming something is outside of, uh, outside of their control. But I mean, it's a little more questionable. I've seen claims denied for things like staffing shortages. The, the airline didn't have enough staff. This was especially common around uh, after travel restarted after the pandemic. What, what's your take on that? How, how, how do the airlines make these decisions? And I've also seen sometimes the, um, the airline's rationale for, for the delay can change uh, over the course of uh, email correspondence with them. What, what do you have to say about that? So first of all, the, the airlines will try to claim everything and anything to be outside their control, whether it is employees, whether it is staffing issues, uh, whether uh, it is even their own aircraft breaking down. I have seen emails when they claim that even the aircraft issues is outside their control. Uh, the biggest flaw in the regime is that the airlines have an incentive to advance these claims because then it may relieve them from paying compensation to the passenger. The European system, which is very different than the Canadian one, does not allow this type of wiggle room, does not have this type of loopholes, because the extraordinary circumstances has to be something very, very obvious, like a volcanic eruption, like a snowstorm. Uh, and anything short of that would not allow the airline to avoid compensation, so they don't play this type of games. The airlines who say make a decision, well, it is no more of a decision than a debtor who decides whether to comply with the obligation to pay or not. Ultimately, the ultimate arbitrary decision maker would be a small claims court judge uh, or a superior court judge to decide whether compensation is or isn't owed. What we see here is a fundamental flaw in the design of the air passenger protection regulations. It was not designed to genuinely deal with large volume of complaints, large volume of transactions, but was designed with that kind of naive idea of people who have never actually seen how passenger rights work in practice, uh, that they think, oh, well, the airline will surely tell the truth. And then based on that truth, uh, we can decide what is fair to assign compensation. But when you deal with large scale transactions, the cost to society of 
determining disputes has to be also factored in. Um, John, we've only got about 15 seconds. Anything you want to add there? Well, I think that, the, you know, the design is flawed. It, it really is flawed. It really is something that's designed uh, by committee. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of influence was made by the airline mm -hmm. industry yeah. in these, in these uh, we've, regulations. We've got to go to break, but we'll be right back.